And I had that vision in my heart. 10,000 people in my heart. But we had no finance. We had only $1,000 in our account. And to build a church seeding 10,000 people, I need millions of dollars. So I discussed with my deacons and elders, and they sat down and they would not talk anything. And uh, some of the elders spoke up and said to me, Pastor, you are a young man, you don't know the economy of this world. This is no time to purchase land and build a church. Whole nation is suffering and you can't get money. So after the committee, I began to pray. The Spirit said to me, when did I ask you to bring my decision through your committee? <laughs> when I speak, you should obey, that's all. I said, yes, I'll do that. From that time, I kept this vision and I prayed and I was so frightened and scared and I prayed and prayed and prayed. And one day, I had a great faith given in my soul. So, with the vision and faith, I went to the city, purchased the land, there is the island, I patched up the land with credit. Then I made a contract with a contractor to build a church without having any money. And from that time on, I was living mostly in prayer, because when I open my eyes, I see the reality. <laughs> and when I pray, I live in a vision. I see the hand of God. And then the war broke out. Yom Kippur war broke out in Israel, and oil shortage came. And our people began to lose job, and bank closed the door, and the creditor came upon my neck, and I was sitting the rock bottom. I was struggling. And I was in a terrible situation. Then all of my Christians began to gather together underground of the unfinished church. And we had prayer meeting. Every night we would gather together and we were pouring our heart and we were praying. And I was praying to God too desperately. But in my mind, humanly speaking, there was no way for me to get millions of dollars in this situation. I knew that I would have bankruptcy. And all the denominational churches and Christians were expecting that the Pentecostal church would have a bankruptcy. They were all my Job's friends. They would come and comfort me, but they were enjoying my bankruptcy. I'm sorry to say it this way, but they really did that. <laughs> and newspaper began to attack me, and even my dear friends in our own denomination began to attack me. So I had no friend. But in very, very cold winter evening, about 2,000 people gathered together underground of that unfinished building and we were praying but we were desperate and I felt hopeless and then one very old woman came out trembling she was about 80 years old she said pastor would you please give me your microphone I said sister go down and sit there don't harass me I have problem enough right now I thought that she was senile, so I said, you go and sit down there. But she was crying all over her face. She says, Pastor, just please give me a microphone for five minutes. I want to say something to the people. So to quiet her down, I gave her a microphone. I said, only five minutes. She said, folks, we've been praying for God to answer to finish this building. She said, I have no husband, no children. I'm living by the support of government. I've been saved under the ministry of Dr. Cho, 
And I have a tremendous hope of going to heaven. Soon I will go to heaven. And I'm coming out here every night praying for this church. But she said, just by praying, we are not reaching to any place. It's when Jesus Christ was in the wilderness. A boy brought five bread, two fish. And we must bring five breads and two fish to God. Then we should pray. Without sacrifice, our prayer means nothing, she said. Then she unwrapped something from very old yellow newspaper. And it was a banged up old brazen rice bowl and chopstick. She said, this is all what I have in the world. This rice bowl, I eat out of it every day, the chopstick. And I want to give this rice bowl and chopstick to the work of God. She said, I can eat food out of cardboard. Instead of using chopstick, I can use my gnarled finger. But she said, I have no money. This is all what I have. And I want to give this to the altar of God and pray. And she brought that old bend up brazen rice bowl to me. My heart was so broken. I was convicted. I said, because I started to build this church, I'm even robbing this old woman of the old rice bowl which she has. I was broken down. I was crying. I said, Grandmother, I can't accept that from you. I'd rather die. I'd rather give up my ministry than exploiting you. No, I can't accept. She crumbled down. She was crying. She said, because I'm an old widow, because I give a very poor things to the Lord, you are not accepting me? And she was crying. Then suddenly the Holy Spirit came upon the congregation. All the people began to cry. All the people began to cry. The Spirit began to blow like a mighty wind. The Holy Spirit used her dedication. And then people began to stand up and they began to make pledge. People began to give their home, their whole year's salary, and they began to give everything and one night we received more than one million dollars there. At those days, dollar was very strong, you know. I could not believe my eyes. Suddenly, the door of heaven was open, and people all began to dedicate. And I received money, and I completed the building. And in 1974, when I was having a dedication, Billy Graham came and he dedicated our church. And we had a minister seminar. Thousands of the interdenominational ministers came to our church. And every one of them praised the Lord. And they came to me and said, we knew that you could make it. <laughs> <laughs> but brothers and sisters, I tell you, when you have vision and faith, God intervened. In most of the difficult cases, in unbelieving way, God intervened. 